Hi right, guys, here we go. Uh, 2.1. This we're gonna call this one 2.1a because there's gonna be uh, two to three parts on this one. Um, so let's get started. So today we're just gonna talk about linear modeling, and you guys have seen this stuff before. But first, let's talk about polynomials because that's what this chapter is about: is polynomials. You remember, poly means many. Okay, it's called polynomials because they have well many different degrees of x. Okay. Here is going to be the Mr. Twilger Cliff Notes version of this. Okay. You can see this godly gook. I shouldn't say it's godly gook. You can see this math. Um, go ahead and just read through it, see if it makes sense. Pretty much what I'm going to tell you is the degree of a polynomial No meal is equal to or equals the largest uh, exponent of an X. Okay. And the lean coefficient is the coefficient. in front of that x. Okay, so I'll give you guys a second to write. A big thing you're going to notice is when we do a few examples, it'll make it a lot easier for you guys. So again, pause if you need to write it. Just remember, polynomial means you have something like something times x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x to the second plus x plus five and then your degree is whatever that largest exponent your x is and the lean coefficient is the number in front of that x, okay? Let's do an example. Actually, let's talk about this first. Yeah, I know, you guys will say ball. Okay, your zero function is when f of x equals zero. The degree is undefined. Okay, constant means your f of x equals a, that'd be something like y equals 2. Because you don't have a degree because you don't have any x's. Your linear function has a degree 1 because it's to the first power. That's your largest exponent of x. And your quadratic has a degree 2 because the largest exponent by an x is a 2. And this one doesn't have a degree because there's nothing to any power. And by the way, your constant function is degree 0 because 2, two times x to the 0 is 2 times 1, which is 2. So your degree is 0. Okay. This is where you guys are going to get really mad because I'm going to deem this whole chart noteworthy. Okay. So go ahead, take a second, write that down. There's not too much to it, it's just three columns. So. Use your guys' music trivia today while you're writing this. I'm not gonna play the song. What I'm gonna do is give you lyrics, and you have to tell me the name of the artist and the tune. Ah, uh, here we go. It's the terror of knowing what the world is about. Watching some good friends screaming, "Let me out!" Okay. Let's do an example. Identify the following functions. Are if. Identify if the following functions are polynomials. If they are, state the degree and the lean coefficient. So first one, let's look at A. Is A a polynomial? Yes. Okay. What is its degree? So when we look at it, this is x squared, x to the fourth, and no x. So the one that has the largest exponent of x is x to the fourth, and what is that exponent? It's four. So degree equals four. Okay. Now, for my leading coefficient, I'm gonna call it LC. By the way, if you didn't realize, examples are always noteworthy, these guys. Okay. LC is 
Well, we look at the one that we squared. The coefficient out in front is a 4, or negative 4. So our leading coefficient is negative 4. Okay, and that's all there is to it, guys. Find the x to the highest power, that's your degree. The number out in front is your leading coefficient. Take a look at this guy. Square root of x squared plus 4. Now remember, that does not equal x plus 2. That square root doesn't distribute through addition. So it is not a polynomial. Polynomial is you have to have something times x plus something times x plus something times x plus a number. Okay, this we have square root of an x plus something else. So it's not a polynomial. And this guy, oops, and this guy, well, we have a negative power here. I'm going to say this, but negative power says we are not a poly, not a polynomial as well. They have to be positive, okay? Your x's have to go to a positive power. Capiche? All right. Okay. This example is pretty straightforward, guys. Um, finding an equation of a linear function. Okay, here's your example. Write the equation for the linear function f such that f of negative 1 equals 2 and f of 2 equals 3. Now remember, your a function is f of x equals something. Equals your y, actually. So this really gives us coordinates, right? This gives me the coordinate negative 1, 2. And this one gives me the coordinate 2, 3. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is the equation. It's going to be linear. So what we have to do is first find slope. And remember, slope is once your y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Or in this example, I'm going to use the 3 first so that way I have all positive front. My y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So I get 1 over 3. So my slope is going to be 1 over 3. So now what do I do with that? I like to use the good old slope intercept sort. So y minus my y equals one third times my x minus two. And I'm going through this one rather quickly, guys, because well this should be review. One third. Ah, gonna have to do some tricky math. And our final answer is y equals one third x plus 2 and 1 third or 2.333 or 7 thirds or however our way you can think of writing it okay okay so there we go pretty much find your slope it's just like solving basic line stuff not right, anything too scary yet so you can just you know okay Average rate of change. Okay, that's going to be Mr. Twelve, your definition of average rate of change. Here we go, right here. You can read this first. You see, it's your f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So that pretty much means you get y minus y, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So I'm going to say your average rate of change. I know I put that in caps because I think this is a big point, they overcomplicate it. Of change is the slope of the line. Is the slope between two points. Okay. So if you see find the average rate of change between these two points or between these two years, all you are doing is finding the slope. When you find the slope, that's your average rate of change. Don't worry about the f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It's just your slope. 
y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. I right, got it, got it, got it. Here we go. Okay, linear correlation. Okay. I'm not going to make you write this down, but please listen carefully. I may put this on an audit just for fun. Okay. Linear correlation. By the way, if you didn't realize it, this is noteworthy. Not the whole blue box, but this guy right here. And all examples are noteworthy, so we're good. Linear correlation. A positive correlation means that you can draw a line, it hits most of the points, or most of the points are close to it, and it's moving in a positive direction. You have a positive slope. Okay? Like your money over time, that's positive. You're getting money, that's a good thing. Okay, so that's a strong positive correlation is if they look like they're about on the line. So I could add some more points if they're in that ellipse. A weak positive correlation means if I draw my line in there, well, it, you get the general feel of what the dots are doing, but they aren't close to the line. There's a lot of outliers, okay? And again, it's positive because it's your money over time. It's a good thing. You're getting more money. Low correlation means I don't know how to draw this line in here to make it to connect the points. There's no correlation. That means these have nothing to do with each other. You can't draw a line. Strong negative. Ooh, whoa. Nah, I'll stay in there. Strong negative linear correlation pretty much means same thing as strong positive, just that you're losing money over time. It's not a good thing. That's negative. Okay. And your weak negative correlation is same thing as your strong positive. You draw a few outliers, but you can still kind of see that there's a general trend. Okay. And this stuff with the R is important. We're going to talk about that a lot more if we jump into statistics later. But for now, we're just going to kind of leave it there. Okay. And that is where we're going to end it for 2.1.